10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Welcome to part 10 of our video series covering the new 1100 scale Saturn V kit from Estes. In this installment, we'll be starting the painting process on the main airframe elements. We'll start by cleaning up the parts, priming the tubes, doing a light sanding, and finally applying the white base coats. Along with the upper and lower airframe assemblies we've already completed, we'll need plenty of Tamiya white primer and a whole bunch of pure white spray lacquer. Before we start spraying primer, we need to do a very close inspection of all our components. What we want to do is clean up things like this guideline right here. The other thing we need to do is just look for any bits of glue or damage to the, the surfaces. The truth is that your fingers are going to be able to notice things more than your eyes do. You can use a common eraser to get rid of the pencil lines. There's a little hickey right here. I'm going to use a couple sanding sticks to smooth that out. This is a fine sanding stick. I'm going to go to an ultra fine sanding stick now. There's something right there. That might be some glue right there. I'm going to bring in some thousand grit paper here. Another hickey right here. The plastic surfaces should all be in pretty good shape. There's a pencil line right in here I'd like to get rid of. You can actually sand the pencil lines away. We should also mask off the shoulder. We don't want to get primer or paint on the shoulder of the upper section. This is a strip of paper cut from a piece of legal sized paper. Nothing fancy or complicated there. We'll start the cleanup process on the lower airframe now, starting with these pencil lines. As this footage speeds by, note that we're using a variety of tools to clean up the parts, such as an artist's eraser, fine and ultra-fine sanding sticks, and 1200 grit sanding paper. We're ready to move forward. I'll wipe everything down with a tack cloth, just a reminder from a previous episode, a tack cloth is just a piece of cheap cheesecloth that's impregnated with a mild adhesive that you use to remove dust from something before you paint it. You can find it at any hardware store in the paint section and they're usually pretty inexpensive. We'll give the upper section the same treatment. We are back in our paint booth to apply the primer. As before, we're using long strokes that begin and end off of the model. We'll do three light coats on each assembly, the upper and the lower. With the primer, there's no need to make the final primer result opaque as the final color coats are going to do that job for us. Our primer has had the opportunity to cure overnight, so we're going to sand it down lightly with some 1200 grit sandpaper. We don't need to go nuts here. It's already very smooth, just a few passes over everything. 
with the paper should be more than adequate. As before, fingers are probably more useful than eyes to determine where you might need to go make another touch-up pass. A little bit right in here. Okay, that's good. We'll hit that with a tack cloth and start on the lower end of the airframe. This will take us a little bit longer, but we'll be just as methodical. I've trimmed down the paper so we can get into these smaller areas a little more efficiently. And this process goes on forever, about 20 minutes total. I think everyone gets the idea at this point. After we make some final sanding checks, we can use a tack cloth to banish any dust from the model and then head to the painting booth. The pure white lacquer is applied in long strokes, beginning and ending off of the model. Because we had such a great white primer surface to begin with, we only needed three coats of lacquer to reach a solid finish. This took two and a half cans of paint, by the way. I'm reminded of a documentary I saw many years ago about a group of French nuns who made this exquisite French lace for high fashion use. One of the things they mentioned was they had to go wash their hands and pray every 20 to 30 minutes for fear of damaging the lace they were making. We're essentially at that point on this project as well. At this point, you should probably stop what you're doing every 20, 30 minutes or so. Go make sure that your work area is clear, make sure your hands are clean, and the prayer probably couldn't hurt either. That brings us to the end of this installment of our build, which should be the shortest episode in the entire series. Before we move on though, I want to mention a great resource that anyone building a similar project should check out. Chris Michelson is a master model builder and for years has published a blog called simply Model Rocket Building. Over the years, Chris has done deep dive builds on a wide range of rocketry projects and even builds many of the models that Estes uses for internal publicity and evaluation purposes. In particular, he did a build of an earlier release of the Estes Saturn V that was especially valuable when my daughter was working on her model way back in 2011. During our next video, we'll be focused on masking and painting the roll patterns on our Saturn V, along with many of the detail elements. Again, thanks for watching.